My boyfriend cheated on me with my mom. Yeah, my own mother. My parents got pregnant with me when they were 16 years old and they've never actually been together. They were high school sweethearts. They dated like four months and broke up before I was even born. I've never been particularly close with my mom. Actually, I lived with my dad and my paternal grandparents growing up and I'm super close to them. I love them. And I mean, I saw my mom for like some holidays and my birthday, but she was just kind of there. Not somebody I was ever close to. She was just always way more concerned in her social life and dating and all of the men that she was seeing that she didn't have time for a daughter. And as much as that hurt me growing up, I was really lucky to have a super cool dad and a great relationship with that side of my family. So it was fine. About three years ago, I get a message from my mom and she tells me that she's getting married and she wanted me to be her maid of honor in her wedding. Kind of weird considering we were not close, but I guess I am her daughter, so I agreed. And through planning her wedding, me and my mom actually got really close and established this bond we never had. I also loved her then fiance, now husband. He was the most incredible guy, so kind, treated my mom so well. And I felt like my mom was turning a new leaf and becoming a way better person and way more responsible. Yeah, I was wrong about that, okay? I was wrong about that. Even though me and my mom got a lot closer, we actually lived in different states, so we didn't get to see each other that often. But about two months ago, her and her new husband moved to live about 30 minutes away from me to help reestablish our relationship, which I thought was so cool and amazing. And I was so excited that I could finally introduce her to my boyfriend. I had been dating my boyfriend for a little over a year and things were going great. We never really fought. He was super great guy. I trusted him, obviously shouldn't have, but I was excited to introduce him to my mom. He heard a lot about her, but logistics just never made it that they could meet. The first time I introduced my mom to my boyfriend was actually at their housewarming party. Which Trying out pet odor eliminator. Party. Some people that she had known from high school and me and my boyfriend. Immediately, I was kind of weirded out because she was very touchy with my boyfriend and very complimentary. And my mom is not like that. She is a harsh critic. Like I walked in and she was like, Kelsey, why would you wear a shirt that's wrinkled? She goes, I didn't even think the shirt was, I didn't see a single wrinkle. But then she looks at my boyfriend and she's like, oh my gosh, you didn't tell me your boyfriend was so handsome. And for the rest of the night, I swear the whole party just turned to be about my boyfriend. She was just asking him a million questions about himself, only talking to him, only focusing on him, which I was a little weirded out by considering that I hadn't seen my mom in person in over a year. I thought that maybe she would want to know what I was up to a little bit more, but I was like, you know, he is a huge part of my life. Maybe this is my mom's way of showing that she cares about me. Okay, sorry, I was gaslighting myself. I know, I'm fully aware I was gaslighting myself. When we're getting ready to leave, I can't find my boyfriend and I see him on the other side of the room in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with my mom and they're standing very close and she's whispering something to him. And I got this feeling in my gut that something was wrong. But who would ever think that there was something going on between their mother and their boyfriend. So I asked him about it after we left. I was like, what was my mom saying to you? He was like, oh, she was just telling me that she's so happy that I found a great guy. Over the next month, my boyfriend started acting really sketchy. I was catching him in lies about where he was. He turned his location off. And in my head, I thought, my birthday's coming up. He must be planning something for my birthday. and I don't want to ruin the surprise. Again, gaslighting myself. Okay, looking back, yeah, I, I can see all the red flags. But when you're in the moment, like, you, you want to assume the best. But everything came crashing down a few days ago when my boyfriend was taking a shower and I was just chilling in bed and I just heard his phone buzzing and buzzing and buzzing. Normally he takes his phone into the bathroom with him. Again, sketchy, but he didn't this time. So it was just annoying me like no other. So I was just going to flip it over and turn it on silent to turn the vibrate off. But that's when I saw who was texting him. <laughs> And y'all guessed it, guess who was sending him all those text messages? Yes, my mother, my own mother. Now he didn't have his text previews on, so I could only see that my mom had sent him 15 text messages, but I couldn't see what they said. But you know, he lost his right to privacy. So I immediately put his passcode right in and opened up that text thread. 
And when I read the message, I, I guess I had this inkling, but I was telling myself I was crazy. Yeah, it was worse than I expected. She's telling him how hot he looked in his new Instagram photo, how much she enjoyed hanging out with him the night before, how she's excited to hang out with him later in the week. And she even said, I don't get why you'd be my, my daughter when you could be with the original. She also had sent him an entire album of the two of them looking like a couple, kissing and cuddling and being out on dates. She's like taking a photo, holding his hand and he's like leading her somewhere. What? We don't have a couple's album. He doesn't like taking photos. How did it take this woman two months to come and steal my man? Two months! Now, we were at my boyfriend's house, so I decided I needed to get out of there. I just left the text thread up on his phone, put the phone down, and left. Like, this is taking mommy issues to a whole new level. I'm sure he was confused when he came out of the bathroom and saw that I wasn't there, but when he opened his phone, he would know the exact reason why I left. Now, he's tried to call and text me a million times, but I've only gotten one text message from my mom, and it just says, please don't tell your stepdad. Mommy, I'm not going to tell him. Yet, I haven't figured out the perfect way to. I'm really glad that my dad raised me when I was growing up because at least he taught me to not take what wasn't mine. My mom had an affair with my brother's wife. My brother met his wife when they were both 25 and in their last year of school. They got engaged really fast, like about four to five months after they met. During their engagement, they spent a lot of time together, but they were never allowed to be fully alone together. So this meant that she would spend a lot of time at my house where either me, my mom, or my sister would spend the night with them. Inevitably, we all got super comfortable around each other, and this is when things started to get weird with my mom. My mom, who is 44 years old, started to get a little too friendly with my sister-in-law. Like for example, we would be watching a movie and they would sit together and then that turned into leaning on each other and then that turned into full on cuddling with each other. Another example is that they would FaceTime each other 24 seven and I'm talking about like waking up and falling asleep to each other on facetime so eventually me and my sister would call my mom out on this and she got extremely angry and she was just saying that they were super close so they would talk a lot and she said she would stop calling her and talking to her so much but she actually never ended up not talking to her as much and she would just hide when they would be facetiming and they would facetime for hours sometimes even with airpods in just listening to each other's background noises and then they would text each other when they want would want to say something to each other this went on for the entire engagement me and my sister would joke about how they were lovers but we were really honestly just joking because we never thought that it would actually get that far I had just gotten home from work and my mom, my sister-in-law, and my sister were all sitting on the couch together. My sister had just gotten home like 10 minutes before me and my sister-in-law and my mom had been together alone all day. I took a seat next to my sister on the couch and she texted me and said, go look at what's on mom's bed, but don't make it obvious. So I got up really quickly and I secretly went and took a peek into my mom's room. I didn't see anything at first. So I went in and took another quick look and I saw a strap in the corner of my mom's room. Every time I tell someone the story about how my boyfriend and I met, they usually start crying or have the chills or tell me that they now believe in true love, that it's the best story they've ever heard. Honestly, I will say objectively, it's a pretty epic story. So since we're celebrating one year together, I decided to finally share it on here. The story actually starts three weeks before we actually met. I got a very random opportunity to go live in a ski town in Austria last summer. This place is so random, it's called Bad Gastein. It's not a very common place to go, but I decided to just say fuck it because I was suffering in Los Angeles. I wanted to leave, I wanted to start traveling, and I thought it was a good place to start. One week before my flight to Austria, I actually just came across this guy in a very weird way that was a medium, an angel reader, and he was like, hey, let me offer you a reading. This guy's super successful, has a really long waiting list, so I decided let's go for it. I don't really seek these types of things, but it seemed too strange to turn down and I, and I decided to just listen to what he has to say. He started opening cards for me and he was telling me a lot of really cool things about my career, telling me that I'm probably gonna be super well known, that I'm gonna write books, that I'm gonna travel the world. And honestly, none of it was surprising to me. When he pulled out a card and said, I'm gonna fall in love in Austria with a guy who is not Jewish, 
who doesn't come from money, who's actually has a very humble background and that I'm going to get married at 29. I looked at him and told him, sorry, but that's just not possible. Mind you, I was about to be turning 28 when I met with this guy. I'm turning 29 in a few weeks. And this is, this is an important detail in the story. And at the time, I was also practicing celibacy, taking a break from dating and did not want a relationship at all. I was really excited because after Austria, I had plans to go to India and Ecuador and just travel the world alone. So didn't make any sense. I remember going home that night, really late at night, sending my friend a recording, uh, telling her everything that he said. We were both laughing and just like, yeah, the boy thing is probably not gonna happen, but who knows, we'll see. Didn't really think about it much after. I remember talking about it and telling my dad in the morning when we were having breakfast and he wasn't thrilled about the non-Jewish thing, but again, nobody took this so seriously. So keep listening to what happens. So after speaking to the medium angel reader guy who said I was going to fall in love, I get to Austria. I got there and I remember going to the sauna and meeting this guy from Hong Kong. He was playing music in Chinese in the sauna and freaking out because he lost his passport. So we ended up bonding a lot. He was much younger than me. And because I didn't know anyone, we decided to just eat the dinner together because we were in this like hostel type co-living place where they were doing barbecue. So we sat together, had dinner, had a great time, good chats. And he was like, you should come out with us. It's my last night, like join me. Not someone who usually goes out, who drinks, um, almost 30 years old, it's just kind of not my vibe anymore. And for whatever reason, they convinced me. I remember going upstairs, getting ready, just being like, oh, I can't believe I'm going out. Like I don't really want to and almost bailed on them. But for some reason, something convinced me. At the same time, my now boyfriend was back home from football. It was already like 11, 30, 12. He was going to sleep and his friends were driving him crazy, telling him, come out, come out, come out. And knowing him now, I'm surprised that he actually did. You'd have to walk up this entire hill to get to this place too. It's like not an easy place to get to. And for whatever reason, they convinced him and he got out of bed, which is shocking, and came to the same place. I got to the bar, I was dancing, doing me. Again, I was not guy focused at all. I was not looking for it. I was not trying to, to find anyone. And I remember dancing alone, just really in a free way, just not giving a fuck, not wanting to get anyone's attention. And I noticed my boyfriend, my now boyfriend, looking at me. Something about our eye contact, I swear, was straight out of a movie. Like I just felt deeply connected to this person and tried to like ignore it actually because I didn't want this to happen. I decided to go outside and smoke a cigarette. I never smoked in my life before this. And for whatever reason, I wanted to smoke a cigarette. So I was trying to roll one and my, my guy, came outside and offered to roll it for me because he saw that I have no idea what I'm doing. We started talking and decided to leave together and we spent the whole night talking. In the first hour that we met, we both started crying uh, hysterically and just felt like we have known each other before. He literally looked at me and said that he feels like he's known me for 50 years. I felt the exact same way. We didn't do anything physical that evening, but we just felt the most deep, intense, emotional connection I've ever felt with a human being in my life. Keep listening, I promise it gets better. He literally fell in love from the first night that we met and we knew or we felt or we thought that it would never last because he's from Greece, he's an Orthodox Christian and I am a Jewish girl from Los Angeles. Every single day, at least once a day for those two months that I was working and living in Austria, we would start crying and just counting down the days to when we would have to part ways and I'll be together. And I was really committed because in the past I gave up on so many dreams and opportunities and on myself for men. I told him, there's no way I'm going to, I'm going to India. I'm going to fulfill my dream. I'm going to travel in South America. I'm going to do these things. I'm not going to give up on this for you. So we knew that even if we were gonna last, we were not gonna see each other for a really long time. So at least once a day, we would start hysterically crying, just realizing that our time was coming to an end. When we said goodbye to each other, it was so, so, so hard. And he says that he knew we were going to meet again. I personally did not have faith that we would, honestly. I didn't think that it would be possible. I couldn't see a world or a reality where he would be accepted from my family that we could make it work like where would we live how like how it just did not make any sense i traveled to india i traveled to ecuador we kept in touch he helped me so much he would literally put alarms on in the middle of the night facetime me help me when i was sick help me when i was having the worst time just really felt like he was with me 
and supporting me throughout the entire experience. And, and after really traumatizing events in India, I, I decided that when my time in India came to an end that I was going to fly to Greece. I've been living in Greece for the past eight months now. So, so, so in love with my boyfriend. And the reader was 100% right. I'm turning 29 and we technically have to get married for us to be able to live in the same country. If there's one thing that I have learned, it's that love is the most powerful force on earth. All of the things that I was afraid of in terms of our lives coming together, our families, accepting, accepting each other, literally did not exist once people were in the presence of the love that we have. So, so I just want to remind you all that love is real and usually comes when you're not expecting it. You thought your ex was bad? Let me tell you about mine. I've been on my Just Alina headband. There's a lot of stories from this ex, but this one's probably the most crazy. So this was a really toxic relationship. Like I constantly found things on his phone that shouldn't be there. Like it was not the first time that something went down. This time I looked at his phone and I saw that he started following and messaging this like girl, I don't even remember her name anymore, but she was from Miami and she was like an artist. And his excuse was that she was a girl that his friend was talking to and he was just DMing her and making sure that she was being, you know, faithful to him. And man, was I gullible at this time. Like I would just believe this stuff that he would say, but I didn't really think anything of it. It was kind of like a small fight. I was like, okay, well just, you know, don't like that's weird and like a few weeks later i see that he's texting a number that i do not recognize and i'm like who is this and why is it like a girl texting you now at this point i didn't even remember the name of the girl that was originally like on instagram but i was trying to like figure out what was going on because i was like why are you texting this person like this isn't right but he stuck to his story saying that he was talking to this person for his friend which of course i couldn't double check with his friend because then he'd be upset. Then like a week later or so, I find text messages while he was sleeping. I looked at his phone, no shame. This relationship was so bad. Like that's the only way I could get any information, dude. And um, there was inappropriate text messages there, like pictures and all. And I was triggered. I was like, what in the heck is going on? So I left his place and immediately went to my best friends because I was like shaking. I recorded the whole entire conversation that he had with her. Like I scrolled and I videotaped on my phone and I'm scrolling through these messages and he's planning to go visit her in Miami. He's telling her all these things that are not true that like he he's like super successful and stuff. Meanwhile, he's just been like not at all in certain things like, oh my gosh, there's lie after lie. Looking back, it was literally so sad sad and lame on his part. But I was a girl in love. I like, I don't know what I was thinking, man. So I was like gonna break up with him. And this is where the story gets even worse. Oh my God, I have to do a part two, I'm out of time, but you need to watch the second part. Part two of my crazy ex story. So watch part one first if you didn't see it. But I have these messages at my best friend's house and I'm like, dude, like, can you look at these? Like, what is going on? I'm like depressed. I'm sad. Like, I can't believe this is happening to me because there so much has already gone in this relationship. Like, I need to do more story time so you guys know how like freaking messed up this was. So I ended up deciding like I cannot be a part of this. Like, I need to just like end it because this is it's already bad. It's already bad. So I don't message him. I already left his house in the middle of the night and I go home late so that my mom and dad like don't know that like there's issues going on. And I go home trying and out the new Fabulosa scented like, cleaning like, sponge. Messages. Now I'm not gonna read the text messages here, but if you want to see them, I did post a whole like YouTube video talking and reading the text messages. There's so much more to this story. Like if you want the full tea, that's where you get it. But to give you like a little summary, basically he starts by going like, "What's going on?" I'm like, "I, you know, this isn't like gonna work out. Like I just, you know, this is it's." I'm done. First, he's like all calm and he goes like, okay, well, I need to drop off your stuff for you. When do you want me to come? And he just keeps asking me about my stuff. Like, I'm like, dude, I'm like traumatized right now. Like, I don't care about my stuff at this moment. I stop responding and he starts baiting me with these tickets that he supposedly got me for my birthday that are to Europe. And he's like, I need to know who you want me to change this to because, um... I want you to have these tickets. And obviously I'm gonna reply to like, you know, 
Europe tickets. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, what are these tickets? What are, what are you even saying? Looking back, that was obviously a way to get me to respond, but I wasn't thinking about that at that time. But I ended up responding. And then again, like after that question, I kind of didn't answer. And this is what really, I don't know, it took a turn. Hours later, I get text messages, like calling me every word in the book, like not good words. He was cursing at me, telling me I was like worthless, that I was like a horrible girlfriend, all this stuff. And before you know it, um, I'm like responding and going, well, okay, like, so we are agreeing that this we're breaking up and like just remember that you cause this with your own actions and let's just take a step down memory lane and remember this is all because i found messages on his phone with another girl that were super inappropriate like clearly emotionally cheating on me like clearly clearly meanwhile it's my fault that uh i checked his phone to find messages between him and another woman last part i'm so sorry you guys like this is a long story but part three it gets worse. Part three of my crazy ex story, you have to watch the first two to know what we're talking about. So anyways, I am reading these messages of him cursing me out, calling me all these types of things. And I say, just remember, this is your fault. Like, don't twist this on me. Do not gaslight me and tell me that it's my fault that I look through your phone when you're literally messaging other women. I'm so grateful I had my friends during this time because like I literally kept forgetting like the way that he would confuse me. I would, I would not be able to keep track of things. Like I would forgive him. So my friends being on the other line and stuff like was literally a lifesaver being like, no, you're not wrong because he literally was messaging other women. So after I don't respond to being cursed at through text messages, he comes back and texts me that he did this amazing thing to win my love back. He got a brand new phone number, deleted all the contacts on his phone so that it was literally only me. So that you know, there's nothing to worry about. If you need to delete all the numbers on your phone in order to keep yourself from messaging other women, uh, I think that's a self-control problem more than more than a too many people in my phone contacts problem. Mind you, there's another story time, another my day when for I summer. was also questioning him about things that were on his phone. And instead of letting me look at his phone, he threw it in the pool. I respond to that by going like, it's too late for that. And he goes, why? Did you move on already? Yes, it took me literally 24 hours to move on from you. It's not the fact that I saw sexual and inappropriate messages between you and another woman. Again, I stopped answering for a short while, like a few hours, because I am processing. And then I start getting messages of him telling me that he needs to talk to me, he's in a horrible place, and that if I don't answer, he's gonna do something bad to himself which he's done before and has never done anything. And I just want to say that's a really like horrible thing to do to a person to put them in that position. Next morning, I receive texts going, I'm at your house. He knocks on the front door, walks in with flowers. My mom opens because she doesn't know that there's a whole fight going on. Tells me how sorry he is, gives me the flowers. I am stunned. The woman was too stunned to speak. Drops down on one knee and pulls out a ring. I had to play along to his delusion and basically go, I'll hold on to this, but this doesn't change the behavior you exhibited. There's so much more to this story. You should definitely watch the YouTube video. I love you so much for making it to the end of this. So if you want to get 20% off of Just Olina, my small business, for all the headbands that are on there, all the scrunchies, all the cute things, use Crazy X for 20% off the entire site. I love you. Also, yes, I stayed in that relationship for like another year, but it's a long story. I'll tell you. I think it's finally time I tell you guys the story of how I was in a five year long situation ship. And I know you might be thinking, how could something like that last for five years? Well, I'm gonna explain to you. So we met in um, college, we were neighbors, and we started hooking up in the summer of 2017. And I'm giving you guys years so you can follow the timeline easier. Right off the bat, we were like hanging out every single day. I took him home for fall break to meet my parents and we made it official. So we were like actually dating. We also had just said, I love you. And we were like not in a situation at this time. 
Then about a month into dating, um, he broke up with me. He broke up for like a day and then we just continued to hang out and nothing about our relationship changed except for the title. So he just wasn't my boyfriend. The rest of my senior year of college, we were doing that same thing where it was like, we weren't dating, but we basically were dating. We spent like every single night together, went to fraternity formals, mountain weekend, beach weekend. Um, he came to my graduation, sat with my parents and my grandparents. So after I graduated, this is really when things all started to go downhill. He is still in college. The dynamic wasn't good. I was really insecure. But for some reason, we were discontinuing this vicious, toxic cycle. We were obviously hanging out a lot less because we had a little bit of like distance between us, like 20 minutes. For the next two years, we basically continued to do that. Then COVID happens and we got closer again. So I thought things were going really well. COVID seemed to like bring us closer together. He had graduated college. He moved down um, to the area of Charlotte that I was living in. We went on vacation. The things were looking up. It was it was going great. And and then we had a conversation um, one day. I was like, things have been going really well. It feels like we're dating. Like, do you ever think we're gonna be boyfriend girlfriend again? Or it's like, I'll get there. Like, I um, just want to do it on my own time. Like, I want to ask you to be my girlfriend on my own time. Well, then like a week later, he breaks up, like ends things because we technically weren't dating, but he just like was like, I actually can't do this. And if you've read my book, yes, he did do that over text. So that was lovely. Then we were broken up for like six months. We were hardly talking. We still kind of hung out a little bit. And then he came to New Year's 2021. And ever since that moment, we just were right back in a situation ship, hanging out and like, no labels, no title. So that was 2021. And then summer 2022, had that conversation again. I was like, hey, we can't really keep doing this forever. And he was like, I agree. Like, I think it needs to end. And that is how we ended. If you're asking why I was in a five year long situation, Jeff, like I definitely could have left. I just um, didn't honestly have the strength to leave. I, I don't regret how long it was. Like, I don't regret anything, honestly. I think the situation taught me um, to stand up for myself and never put my needs, wants or needs like behind someone else's. Yeah, I just felt the need to kind of explain this timeline because I definitely think people get confused when I talk about being in a situation ship for that many years because it is insane. But if that person doesn't want you to leave like and they're begging you to stay, like you are going to stay. And that's exactly what happened to me. Okay, so I was in a toxic relationship and I knew it was toxic, but I didn't know it would turn like scary until this one night. Story time. So my boyfriend lived in the middle of nowhere, Canada, in a cabin in like the woods. I'm which should have been my first red flag, so. but it wasn't. <laughs> so I was staying with him in May and one night he wanted to go to bed and I wanted to stay on the couch and watch TV. So he goes to his room and then like 20 minutes later, I hear him yelling and throwing things around in his room. And I was like, oh my God, what's wrong? When I saw him, I, it was the weirdest look in his eyes. It was like my boyfriend was gone and he was possessed by this angry monster guy. He was like, why don't you want to come to bed with me? Why don't you care about me? You're so cold. You're so cold all the time. You don't even love me. And I was like, what? Like, I really had no idea what I had done that triggered this because he did have anger issues and he would get mad at me a lot. But usually I could like figure out why he was mad. And this time I was shocked. So I was like, I don't know, what's wrong though? And he picks up my suitcase and he throws it across the room and he's like, it's just you, you're so cold. You're gonna move to LA and never talk to me again. So it was around 1 a.m. at this point and he was picking up my suitcase and pushing it around the room and saying that he wanted to take me to the airport and drop me off there because I was gonna leave him anyway. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's totally fine. Please take me to the airport. And at that point I, I knew being in like a public place was safer than being alone in this cabin with him. So I picked up whatever I saw like that the I could find on my clothes that he had thrown. Put them in my suitcase and then I let him put me in his car and then he starts, oh my God, it was the middle of the night and I, he couldn't see anything on the road and he was speeding and swerving around in the lanes and playing like the weirdest sad music and crying and yelling while he was driving. So at this point, I didn't know if I was gonna make it. Like I didn't know what he wanted to do in the car like cause he was acting so irrational. So I decided to text my roommate um, and I told her his car info and like the license plate and where I was. And I grabbed the handle and I was like, I, I guess I looked too scared and he saw me texting my roommate and he was like, oh my God, you're telling your friends that I'm abusive, aren't you? Like, you're gonna tell them I'm abusive. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not. I promise I won't tell anyone, I won't tell my family, I won't tell anyone. And then he does a great, like a huge U-turn. He does a U-turn in the middle of the road and he takes me back to his house and told, he told me to get in his room and like stay in his bed. That way I couldn't tell my family that he left me at the airport or something. 
and I that was the most terrifying thing night of my entire I literally stared at the ceiling the entire time because I heard him pacing outside of the, his door and I locked it but I didn't know if he was going to come in at any trying moment, out the Febreze Miami fragrance I, but I had to pee really bad and I couldn't use the bathroom though because he was outside of his door and I was scared of him so I held it all night long and I didn't sleep and then in the morning I had a UTI and he had to take me to the doctor and he said he loved me enough to make sure that my health was okay even though I was so cold to him so yeah trying my Everything new swan blender my ex cheated on me oh god I'm here with prime video to celebrate the launch of wilderness and it's about cheating I thought it tied in perfectly with how my ex cheated on me never told this story before so we were in a long distance relationship. He came to visit me from Paris to London. I thought it would be a really good idea to greet him with a literal plaque, basically standing like an idiot at Queen's Cross Station. Come back to Eurostar, it's all cute and romantic. Go back to my family home, bear in mind, and we have a nice evening together. The next morning comes and he wakes up really early and he was like, babe, I need to go meet up with some friends. And I said to him, you don't have any friends in London. He goes on to say, oh no, 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 I made some friends in Paris and they want to see me. And I was like, a bit weird, but okay, go see your friends. So I guess on with my day and it gets to 6 p.m and i'm like are you gonna come home he was like oh i'm running a bit late mm. finally gets home at like 7 p.m me being delusional again i was like okay fine whatever but then we go to bed and i swear to god in the two years of us being together i had never even thought about going through his phone but my gut was screaming at me so he goes to sleep and for about 20 minutes i'm praying that i would not find anything because i was so in love with this man i go to his side of the bed and i go to whatsapp not even a girl's name, a nickname. My sexy tourist. My heart fell through my chest. Texts on texts. My heart broke in that moment, I'm not gonna lie. He had obviously met this girl in Paris and had been seeing her. He was like, Kiara, I can't help, I met someone else. The first thing he said to me. At this point, I nearly called the police on him. He obviously then apologized and was like, no, 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 I love you so much. I was like, get out of my house. It was the worst night of my entire life. Anyway, yeah, so I can tell you this now because I'm over it, but yeah, that was uh, a whirlwind. Because wilderness is about cheating, it was like, I need to tell my story now. I'm gonna ask you a very tough question. <laughs> You're probably not going to want to answer and if you don't that is fine by me because if you choose not to answer it then you will be faced with a consequence a consequence as you know I, that i will explain to you after you've wow. made the decision <laughs> would you like to hear your truth question yes so tony the sydney morning herald reported last year that you and ryan signed a multi-million dollar contract with spotify your spotify exclusive tony and ryan they reported that you did sign that contract to join their family of exclusive podcasts for quite quite a sum of money mm -hmm. can you confirm or deny that it was multiple millions legally i actually can't <laughs> so i guess i'm going to the consequence Excellent. This is very unfair. <laughs> <laughs> I want to call my lawyer. <laughs> we did think that would be the case. But trust me, this consequence isn't as bad as the last one you've received. Yeah, see, I'm probably building it up in my head because the last one was, it was nasty. This one, like, you can let it sit for the rest of the episode. You'll explain what I mean in okay. a second. Okay. So your consequence is you're going to have to hand your phone to me. And what I'm going to do is... Scroll, land on a random contact, and send the following message. Hey, it's been so long. <laughs> Cannot stop thinking about the time we slayed. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on who you ask, winky face. <laughs> We're overdue for a vino, wine emoji, X. <laughs> Fuck, okay. Is this like the way you type or no? No, yeah. absolutely not. We thought so. We yeah. thought so. Um, okay, so am I handing you my phone now? Yes. What will right. happen is we'll send that text now. And Do then... I have to um, unlock it for you? Is that like, because you didn't say I had to unlock the phone. <laughs> so I'm happy to hand you my phone and you probably can't get into no, it. No, well, I'm still talking about the rules. So <laughs> as I'm doing this, I'll say you have to unlock the phone for me, <laughs> please. Okay, here you go. So what I'll do is I'll send the text and then we'll check back in at the end of the episode to suss the damage. Cool. Okay. I'm going to close my eyes and just... Right. Wouldn't it be funny if it was like like a plumber or something that you used Yeah, that and for? that's fine. Dean Malay, can we text him? Yes. Okay. We used to work together. This is actually not as bad as I thought it was going to go. <laughs> text, text, text. Imagine if you landed on your own number in my phone. <laughs> That would have also been pretty iconic, to be honest. <laughs> Send. <laughs> and now we wait. Okay. I have a little bit more information for the no. both of you. No. But brilliant. <laughs> I love this. Oh, God. Okay. Sure. 
<laughs> Whatever. <laughs> this may add a little bit more context. Oh my god, I didn't even clock that there was another. <laughs> Christ. Okay, so Zoe continues. The moment it dawned on me that I loved Mitch was a really complicated one. It was the day we found out he has stage two <gasps> testicular cancer. Oh, this is the twist of all twists. I can't, sorry, keep going. <laughs> I had no idea at the time that oh. Mitch was even getting checked for anything. I rocked up to the house to hang out with Xavier and all of the family was huddled together around the couch. Xavier was so wrapped up in what was happening that he forgot I was even coming over. When I looked at Mitch that day, he was so scared and vulnerable. I realized that what I was feeling went beyond concern for a loved one or a family member. It was unmistakably romantic love. That love has only deepened with time. After his diagnosis, Mitch moved back home to have the support of his parents and brother. That's when I started seeing him whenever I slept over at the house. And that's when this god-awful situation of me, you know, loving him, went from serious to potentially life-changing. Mitch is still going through treatment, but the doctors are extremely positive and hopeful that he'll essentially be back to his life as a healthy 24-year-old soon. So it's not as if I'm in love with the dying brother. I'm in love with the brother who had a significant health scare, but who will almost certainly bounce back to who he was before. But Mitch's cancer diagnosis was like a big glowing arrow in my life. And it showed me exactly what I want, or at least who I think I want to spend my life with. Oh no, Gemma, I fear this has muddied the waters for me a little bit. This Reddit thread reads, I have always been insecure about myself, but it was amplified in relationships. I have a few mental illnesses that also make my insecurities worse, but relationships were always a catalyst for terrible thoughts about myself. I would always think that my significant other would cheat on me. It could be anything that would set me off, a new girl he'd followed or a post that he'd seen, but it would always send me into a worried frenzy. Am I even his type? Does he even like me? Why don't I look like her? These are the most common questions that plagued my mind in every relationship I had. When my now boyfriend of eight months came into the picture, all of that changed, or so I thought. He has shown me nothing but pure love, care and attention from the start. I had no doubt in my mind that he loved me because he always made sure to show it. He knows about my past toxic relationships and has made a point to drive himself away from being that. He did everything right, from flowers and gifts to calling and texting and hanging out in all of our spare time. We are inseparable. Twin flames, soulmates, two puzzle pieces. Until I started getting that nagging feeling again. Something was off. I couldn't shake that feeling. He always let me check his phone, no questions asked, and I would find nothing each time, as he would find nothing on my phone as well. But still, I couldn't help but feel that something was wrong, that things were starting to get stale, and I was uninteresting to him, not enough to satisfy him anymore. Aww. So I did the unthinkable. It's a big ask. I would like you to maybe guess where you think this is going. Oh my god. It has something to do with social media. Did they like go on Tinder or something? Close. I went behind his back and made a fake social media account to follow him on. Made the profile look like a pretty girl and requested it. I wanted to see if he would accept it and message the account. It was sick, but I was so scared. Oh. He accepted the request and I started messaging him immediately. And once I sent those texts, he called me. I was nervous, but I picked up. And there he was to tell me that a random girl had messaged him and he was laughing about it. Great. That's nice. <laughs> I laughed along with him while he shared his screen and I had to watch him react to what I, on the fake account, was texting him in real time. It felt so, so wrong. Eventually, I had to leave for work. So he said our goodbyes and he promised he would update me. This is where things turned sour. This Reddit thread is much longer, so there's more to the story. Okay. Again, predictions, Sarah? Do you have any predictions? Did he catch on to that it was like his girlfriend not yet okay not yet this is what happened he starts messaging the fake account again but this time more flirtatious than they were before oh, no. i played along and he ended up asking for and then sending nude photos <gasps> i was so shocked i was shaking and didn't know what to do oh, no. i know so i took screenshots of the conversation sent it to my own account and sent it to him i was angry and hurt I never knew he would do this. He didn't know it was me. He still doesn't know. Oh. 
So I guess she did all of that, sent it to herself, sent it to him to be like, someone, some random sent me this, what have you done? right. I left early from work, he picked me up and we started arguing immediately. He claimed it was fake screenshots, but I already knew. I knew it was him because it was me talking to him. He ended up lying to me for hours while I cried and pleaded with him. He only admitted it when I gave him an ultimatum. Tell me the truth or we are breaking up. Our relationship is not the same. It's been a few days, but the guilt is overwhelming. He feels terrible. Every time I see him, he cries and pleads with me, saying that he loves me so much. If I had not done this, we would have been okay. If I hadn't let these insecurities drive me to do this, this sick attempt at a loyalty test, we would have been okay. No. Yeah, I don't think so. (laughs) I am extremely ashamed of myself. It was the only good thing in my life and my selfishness got in the way. Fuck, she says at the end. Hi guys. This is a secret I really needed to get off my chest. Ooh. Yeah, good. (laughs) When I was approaching my 34th birthday, I made the decision that I didn't want to wait any longer to have a baby, even if it meant being a single mother. I like that. I love that. What a queen. I didn't have any dependents and was in a good place financially. I knew I could afford, both financially and emotionally, to raise a child. Also, I knew that if I kept waiting for someone to come along, I could be way past 35 before a baby came into the picture, and I didn't want that for my life. Though I was technically single, I was in a friends with benefits arrangement that had been going on for about five months. We were just friends at first for about 18 months before we both realized we were attracted to each other and had actually started to develop feelings for one another. So why didn't we just date? You might be wondering. Well, he had plans to move away to another state. So he made it very clear from the beginning that he didn't want to get serious with anyone. I accepted this and that's why we ended up as friends with benefits. That never works though, right? Friends with benefits, yeah. Given I was keen to have a baby, I decided to come off my birth control without telling him to see if I could fall pregnant naturally. No! 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 Actually, I needed a second to process that, but no! No! Oh my god, that's... I actually feel shit that I called her a queen at the start of this. Yeah, me too. That's not queen (laughs) behaviour. Take it back. (laughs) (laughs) We're unqueening her. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I figured it would take some time to fall pregnant, and if I did, and it fell close to his moving away date, there's a world where I wouldn't tell him about the pregnancy. What? I didn't expect him to take any responsibility anyway. I was more looking for an unofficial sperm donor. That is, can I say that's fucked? That is really fucked. That's fucked. Like, illegal on so many levels. You know how, like, stealthing is now illegal? Like, if um, uh, someone, a penis haver takes a condom off during sexual intercourse, that's illegal now. Surely this is illegal. That is, like, stealthing in the backwards way. Exactly. I would consider this in the stealthing family. Thank you. Yes. Me too. Definitely. That is actually terrible. I am speechless. Okay. Sorry, I'll just keep going. (laughs) (laughs) It turns out that I was more fertile than I thought. <gasps> we got pregnant on my first month of birth control. I love how she said we, we got like, pregnant. Um, you are not a team here. Oh, that. Oh my. Okay. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> I decided I had to tell him about the pregnancy because he wasn't moving for another five months. And yes, obviously would find out anyway. Five months pregnant. Fucking hell. Holy God. Cannoli. I played it off as an accident and told him that I knew about his plans and didn't want anything to change for him. I told him I intended to have the baby, but totally understood if he didn't want to be involved. At first, he seemed okay with that plan. However, within a couple of days, he said he couldn't move away now and that he wanted to be there for me and the baby. Oh my God. So this guy's like an actual gem, an angel. He then asked me to officially be his girlfriend. This all took me by total surprise. It was not the reaction I expected from him at all, but at the same time, it made me really happy, so I said yes. Oh, no. I I really don't want to be judgy because this person has trusted us with her secret, but I'm not happy. Me too. (laughs) We moved in together after a few weeks, and over the course of the pregnancy, we grew closer and closer together and our relationship developed into something wonderful. He also grew really excited about the baby. He came with me to every appointment, got a second job to be able to provide the best he could for our daughter, was always massaging my back, rubbing my belly, 
and going out searching for whatever I crave to eat. My boyfriend does that and I'm not even pregnant. (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't have asked for a better partner. Unfortunately, our baby has had very bad complications at birth and ended up with severe health consequences that we will have to deal with for all of her life. She's only a year old and has already needed three surgeries, countless doctor's appointments, as well as constant therapy and medications. It has been really hard on us emotionally, physically, and financially. Taking care of her has consumed our whole life, but it has also brought us even closer together in this fight for our baby girl's health. Which it would. Like, there's no one else probably in your circle of friends or your family that understand what you're going through. A month ago, he asked me to marry him. He said he loved us more than anything, and he wanted to be with us forever to take care of us. I was incredibly happy and, of course, said yes. After all, we did have feelings for each other long before all of this, and we do have a really good and healthy relationship. Except for the small fact that he still thinks the pregnancy was an accidental failure of birth control. I don't think I can ever bring myself to tell him that I got pregnant on purpose, particularly after so much time has passed. But at the same time, I don't want to start our marriage with that weighing over me. I don't think he would leave because of this, but I don't really know if he would ever forgive me. Especially because of all the stress and struggles we've had due to our daughter's health condition. Should I come clean? Is it even relevant anymore? I'm off the apps. I'm deleting them. I'm never, ever, ever using a dating app. Again, because I don't trust anybody. You can just be whoever the fuck you want on there. And the last person that I dated was not the person I thought they were. Mind you, we went on about six dates before I figured this out. I figured this out when I met his friends. This is key. For girls who aren't really sure about someone, he met my friends two weekends ago went really well. He was all buttoned up, very nice, very respectful. Everybody really liked him. And I was like, oh my God, okay. You know, I was kind of testing the waters there to see how my friends reacted. I've been just like a little bit unsure about him. So I was like, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe I like him more than I thought. Keep it going, had a couple more dates, still feeling like not sure. He asked if I want to go meet his friends out uh for saint patrick's day and i was like oh you know i have plans already he's like no you should just come and just meet them like i really want you to meet them these are his best friends mind you um and i'm like okay you know what i'm gonna make it work like we're trying to get to a certain level this has potential for this person being my boyfriend i'm gonna like make the effort go see his friends try and make a good impression see what's up I get to the bar. Mind you, it's like an early 20s bar, absolutely packed. There's girls like, and guys like, at every corner, barely pushed past. I text him, I'm there. He knows I'm coming, doesn't answer. I have to go like search for him inside this like bar club, uh, you know, some hybrid of that. Can't find him. I find his friend who I met um, once. He comes up and is like, oh, Colette, like we're over here. And I'm like, oh, cool. So. I go, and I got a really good impression from this guy the first time I go to meet the group over, and I see the guy that I'm dating, who's, mind you, like, very shy and reserved with me, but we're, like, slowly opening up, so I walk up to the group, and he's, like, we're, like, in the group, but he looks at me, and he, like, walks over so that we're in the middle of the circle, and he just, like, starts putting his tongue down my throat, like, full-on makeup, which he doesn't even do when it's just the two of us, and I was like, whoa. So I kind of like pulled back and was like, hi, like, it's good to see you. And he's, I mean, I'm thinking like, okay, he must be really drunk. Like, I, what the fuck? Gets way worse, way worse. Starts introducing me to his friends. Okay, great. Like meeting all his friends. And then he's like on his phone trying to coordinate and get guys there, I guess. Oh, I need a part two. This is, it's worth it. Trust me. 
Something I will never understand is when you're friends with a girl and you find out that her boyfriend is a cheater or even worse, they try to come on to you. And so of course you tell your friend and instead of them getting mad at the guy, they cut you off. This happened to me before where I was dating a guy and I introduced him to my best friend at the time. And for some reason I had gave him her number because we were all meeting at a party and I think he was gonna get there before me. So I was like, just call her when you get there so you're not like lost. So a few days later, my friend calls me and is like, hey, um, your man is calling me to come over and it was two o'clock in the morning so you know exactly what he was calling her for so i was like oh okay because immediately all feelings went out the window like you're trying to hook up with my best friend like of all people on earth like this guy was very good looking he could have got with anybody but you want to hook up with my best friend like you are demonic like you have to go so we immediately went into like sting operation mode because i wanted to catch him red-handed of course so i had my friend call him back on three-way and this man was so stupid like he should have known something was up because she was asking him like all of these different questions and he's just yapping his gums away like just talking 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 like a little parakeet and then finally i jump in on the phone and it goes silent like i literally gagged him you guys like i could hear the lump in his throat forming when i came onto the phone so he's trying to talk his way out of it but like he got caught red-handed and this is how i know this guy was like truly Really deranged because then he starts crying on the phone like trying to manipulate me like this man was sobbing on the phone and even I got uncomfortable because I'm like bro we haven't even been dating that long like it's not even that serious <laughs> so he's just crying me and my friend are just laughing at him like hyena maniacal laughing at this man while he's crying on the phone we're just like <laughs> And I was so happy in that moment because it was like my first sting operation and it was so successful. After that, I never talked to him again, never saw him again, was just totally done. And the next day, me and my bestie went to Ted's Montana Grill and we got margaritas. And I just feel like that's how every situation like that should end with you just laughing at the man on the phone while he's crying and then go getting drinks. But yeah, don't ever let a man come in between you and your best friend, like ever. So heaps of people are talking about what they'd do if their boyfriend had a girl best friend and I thought I'd share my experience because my ex did. Initially, I was fine with her. They stopped going on their dates that they would go on except for going to the market together every Saturday morning. So a few weeks into our relationship, a message popped up from her on his phone while he was driving and I grabbed his phone and I unlocked it because I knew his password and I said, oh, this person texted you. And he snatched the phone out of my hand and started yelling at me saying that that's an invasion of privacy and that I shouldn't look through his messages. I was just so taken aback because I was really out of character for him. And I was like, okay, um, but I wasn't going to go through your whole phone. I was just going to see what she was messaging you saying. And I even said to him, that is a massive red flag. Like, what the heck? And he's just like, I'm just not comfortable with it. Like, it's an invasion of privacy. And so I was like, okay, like, I guess I'm crazy then. <laughs> like... So obviously I started getting less comfortable with this girl. And fast forward a little while, I'm at a festival with him and all his friends and she's there as well. And we are in the mosh pit. It's getting close to the end of the night and I look over at them and he's got his arms wrapped around her and kisses her forehead for like, he lingered. It was there for a minute. And I looked over at one of his other mates who was like, don't do anything. Like just, it's all good. Don't, don't panic. And I was just like, I saw welling up and she turns around and laughs in my face. And I was just like, what i said to the girls in the mosh some just like random people i'm like my boyfriend just kissed his girl best friend on the forehead in front of me and they were all like and apparently after i left they were all giving him the sink eye all night so if you girls are watching thank you anyway so i left and i was expecting him to come after me and like apologize but of course he didn't that night i went through his phone because i was like what the heck is in here and i found messages of him talking shit about me to her and saying things like i'm sorry that i had to invite jaden to the markets i wish he didn't come all this stuff and i was just like what the hell i took screenshots sent them to myself confronted him the next day and he apologized and even said that he would stop talking to this girl we even drove to her house the next day so he could go upstairs and like tell her no that's not okay we're not gonna be friends anymore like at least close friends anymore a few weeks after that i see a message from her pop up and i was like what the heck open it they've been talking again and he sent her this long ass message saying jane was in the wrong i told her off i told like he told me off for being so dramatic and trying to make me ch make a choice and stuff and i was just like what the heck confronted him and he said that him and his mum put this message together to send to her because like it wasn't okay what i did and i was like 
If you had told your mom the whole story, I guarantee you she wouldn't be saying that's okay. And of course, I stick around for even longer. It was a dragged out relationship. It was, it was doomed. I eventually was able to give myself what I was hoping to get from him and left. It literally made me feel like I was going crazy and like I was the one doing the wrong thing. And of course, there were so many other things that happened throughout this relationship with this girl um, that I'm not even mentioning because that would just be too long of a video. But I just wanted to share the main points. And yeah, what would you do if you started dating someone and they had a girl best friend? My husband of 20 years is cheating on me with my son's 18 year old girlfriend. I'm a stay at home mom and my husband works in finance. We've been married for about 20 years now and we have a son and a daughter. My son is 18 years old and he's a senior in high school and my daughter is 15 years old. I love my children so much, but my marriage with my husband has become a little bit stale over the years for a lot of reasons. One of them being how I've just aged kind of poorly since we got married. Our son, Eric, is dating someone named Amy and they've been together since freshman year of high school. So they've been together for about four years now. He absolutely adores Amy. He loves her. It's his first love. I personally see Amy as a second daughter. Last week, I inadvertently saw my husband's phone as he was swiping up the apps in his phone to like exit them out. He always does that subconsciously. I got a quick glimpse at some text messages between him and my son's girlfriend, Amy. The message that I saw was genuinely so disturbing and I'm pretty sure it said something along the lines of, I miss sucking your cockadoodle doo. I was honestly in complete disbelief. I froze in place and I honestly spent the next two days just contemplating if what I saw was actually what I thought it said. I was trying to convince myself that I might have just misread the message. However, over the last several days, I have been doing a little bit of investigating and I'm pretty sure that I did not misread the text messages because I found a file in his computer with a lot of BDSM porn. And I also found a file of pictures of my son's girlfriend, Amy, from her Instagram. They weren't inappropriate, but still that kind of solidifies in my brain that they definitely have been doing something together. Part two is up on my page now. My husband of 20 years is cheating on me with my son's 18 year old girlfriend. Even though it seemed like I obviously had enough proof, I still needed to get the confirmation that I really needed to solidify that this was all true by going through his phone. When I got a chance, I went through his phone. I honestly wish I had never looked in the first place because I saw so many messages that I just did not want to see that are going to probably scar me for life. They were filled with so many mean messages about me, calling me ugly, calling me fat, comparing me to Amy, and Amy was just lolling laughing and going along with the joke with him i've honestly always had hunches that paul was cheating on me but never did i in a million years expect that it was going to be this type of situation a few weeks ago i found a girl's thong in our room which i kind of just passed up to be our daughter's thong but now that i think of it that makes absolutely no sense like there's no way that our daughter's thong would be getting in our room for any reason obviously as devastated as i am I'm also so devastated and so nervous for my son to find out because he has been in love with Amy for the past four years and my husband is betraying both of us and honestly, mostly my son because how could you do that to your own son? I truly don't know how to even approach this situation. I don't know how I'm gonna tell my son and I genuinely can't even believe that I married this scumbag in the first place. I keep questioning like, am I really that much of an idiot to let this fall under my watch? like how did this happen without me noticing until now as i said before my son absolutely adores amy so much this could be so devastating for him i mean it is going to be so devastating for him who can even like grapple with this amount of betrayal i think this is really gonna affect him i mean he's only 18 years old and having to deal with this type of situation and betrayal from your own father is just gonna be so heartbreaking and i just feel so bad because my son and my daughter are just innocent bystanders in this situation. I don't know who to turn to about this, and I'm not even posting this for sympathy or anything. I'm really just posting this for maybe some advice from someone who's been through something similar. I'm divorcing my husband because he cheated on me with our son's 18-year-old girlfriend.
my brother connected me with a junkyard dog type lawyer and I gathered all the screenshots and the conversations that I possibly could from Amy and my husband's conversations. I was only able to get the last three months because that's all that was on his iCloud, but most of the messages were just dirty, flirty, and I saw a lot of negative messages about me. I saw his call log and it looks like him and Amy talk very fr frequently for hours at a time. Um, he also uses dating apps and it looks like he uses a filter to seek out girls from about 18 to 22 or so. I copied all of his files on the computer and gathered as much information as I possibly could. He spends a lot of time on sex chat rooms and he spends a lot of money on OnlyFans. I rummaged through every possible hiding place that I could and I found a lot of handcuffs, lubricants, sex toys. I also found a couple outfits that looked like Catholic schoolgirl type outfits and also a French maid type of outfit. I picked up Mary and Eric from school and we went to my brother's. They could tell something was off so I delicately told them the entire situation. Mary was honestly the most upset over even Eric. Part two of the update is on my page now.